Hello, lords and ladies. Welcome back to Cartoon Hangout, your place for all things cartoon. I never once expected to see the Scooby-Doo gang explore the goth subculture, let alone go goth themselves. But that's exactly what happens when Shaggy and friends are invited to a goth party by an old friend of Shaggy's. It's one of the many ways Be Cool Scooby-Doo shakes things up, and the results are pretty hilarious. Are you sure the fun meter has been set to full on? I loved Fred in this episode. He's got no chill, and it's hysterical. Goths are a subculture that began in the 1980s with the goth rock scene. I think Fred has goths mixed up with vamps, but that's an honest mistake. This episode is jam-packed with lots of comedy, something the show handles pretty well. A lot of it is aimed at goths, but I think it's all in good fun. Empathy, Fred. Don't judge a man until you've walked a mile in his cool platform boots. There's even a part where Shaggy goes up against the Lord Goth, and it involves staring at cute animals. Ah yes, the Goth's mortal enemy. Cuteness. It's so bizarre, and I love it. However, it's not long before yet again the gang encounter a mystery. This time, a plant monster which Fred has quite an opinion on. A oh, plant monster? Seriously? It's funny how he doesn't question any other monster, but a plant one? Nah, that's crossing the line. And admittedly, I wasn't really digging the plant monster design either, but it really grew on me. Are these puns annoying you? Good, that means they're working. One thing I do love about this episode is the story, focusing on Shaggy's character and his relationship with Amelia. Unlike Mystery Incorporated, Be Cool Scooby-Doo doesn't really tackle romance much, outside the one episode of Fred crushing on a farm girl. So to even see a tiny bit of it is cool. Shaggy spends the episode tackling who he is as a person and who he wants to be, a coward or a goth, as well as if there's something between him and Amelia. And, lo and behold, they're caught kissing. Kissing? In my Scooby-Doo media? Say it ain't so. Unhand him, Deathbringer! Though Shaggy is right, that is an overreaction from Scooby-Doo. Luckily, the writers stray away from having Scoob act too weird about Shaggy being with Amelia, Unlike how Mystery Incorporated did it. I get that it's a staple in some cartoons to have these two characters have this almost married couple relationship, but it not actually be romantic. But I don't really want to think of Scooby and Shaggy as a couple, even as a joke. I've seen enough fan art of that for one lifetime. Thank you very much. I am a little sad, though, how the episode concluded that plotline with Shaggy friend zoning Amelia, but. Considering the show doesn't have an ongoing story, we were never going to see her again anyways. However, I do approve of Amelia as one of Shaggy's new love interests. Can we get some fan art of these two? Because Shaggy deserves way more girlfriends and love interests in general. Actually, about Amelia, I really liked her character as a whole. I've always had a thing for goth characters in cartoons like Sam, Raven, and Gwen, so someone like Amelia is always going to appeal to me. The design she has is perfection, with her black dress and corset to her torn fishnet tights. My only nitpick for her is the voice actors didn't always do that an amazing job with the lines that she was given, but otherwise she was a great new character. If I did have a couple problems with the episode, I would say it would be how Amelia got introduced. <laughs> Shaggy, it's me, Amelia. They nearly run her over, and that's what she says immediately afterwards? How did she even see Shaggy? Why did they write her as having that initial reaction? It's nonsensical, but not in a funny sort of way. It's just oddly done. The other problem is the voice for Lord Morlack. Dearest Amelia. You're kidding. It's clearly them lowering the pitch of someone's voice in order for them to sound like a kid or something. Except it's done really badly here. Like, extremely bad. Unless this was the intention, I don't see why they couldn't have gotten someone else who could pull off a young boy's voice. It's the pulsating zit on an otherwise immaculate episode. And at the end of the day, I do think American Goth is a fabulous episode. The jokes rarely missed, it had an interesting monster design, we got some neat character moments with Shaggy, I loved how the gang looked as goths, 
damn Daphne. And Fred was in absolute mood the entire time. Easily one of the better episodes of season two. Go watch it now on HBO Max. And that'll be it for my review of American Goth. If you enjoyed the video and you want to be around for more content like it, consider becoming a member so you get these videos a week earlier than others. Or don't, and check out this recent video I did on some kind of spicy secrets in an Adventure Time fan game. I know, scandalous. Thanks for watching. Take care.